Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I wanted to go over how to use ambient occlusion in Maya 2018. The nice thing about the ambient occlusion in Maya, especially with Arnold, is that it's super fast. So I'm going to show you not only how to make it, but also how to implement it on your textures. So let's go ahead and get started. What I want to do is uh, create a new surface shader, assign new material. I'm going to go to my Arnold and assign a new AI standard surface. And I'm going to use a preset, and this time I'm going to use, let's say, hmm, let's try ceramic. We can always replace this later. So let's take a look at it. If you guys are interested, you can always download this shader balls. That's what they're called in academicphoenixplus.com. So you're more than welcome to follow along if you like. So let's try that again. I'm going to select my presets here at the top right. And I am going to go to, well, let's take a look at copper. Okay, so this is copper. I think I'm going to increase the roughness just a little bit. And what I want to do is um, I want to capture moss or rust in areas where it usually starts, which is in the cracks and in areas where it's not really exposed to the light. So, whoa, that was interesting. Um, let me click one, one. There we go. And the way we can do that is by driving it with occlusion. So right now what I have is one shader. This is going to be our rust. So let's go ahead and select this. We're going to assign a new material. And uh, let's go ahead and call this rust. So I'm going to label everything. I'm going to call this AI rust. AI stands for Arnold. You can click here. This is a nice thing about Arnold too. You can click your geometry through the actual uh, render window, which is amazing. I like copper. So now I know that these things are laid out. And what I want to do is use my third shader ball, and this is going to be mixed together, and then I'm going to go ahead and show off how it works. So right now, let's go ahead and grab our rust here, and I want to make it look a little rusty, and of course, it's a little bit more reddish brown. So it's a really interesting looking color, and of course, it's very rough. There's not much uh, light coming off of it. So let's see how that looks like. And uh, I personally don't like the white specularity, so I'm going to go ahead and just grab this and just make it slightly lighter so that the specular picks up a little bit of that me metallic color. So I think this is going to be good for my base. So now I'm ready to start mixing. What I want to do is work on the hypershade. So let's go ahead and open up the hypershade. And we have this big mess here. And I'm just going to go ahead and open up a new tab to start off clean. I'm going to grab my AI copper and my AI rust and I'm going to click on here, which is going to reveal both of my shaders. I'm going to mix these together, so I'm going to go ahead and do an AI mix. Now, you guys can actually go to my channel and see how I use the AI mix shader. So if this is a little bit fast, just go ahead and uh, look at my other videos, and you'll see that I have a, a tutorial uh, just on using the AI mix shader. Okay, so I've got my shader one, which is my rust, so I'm going to go ahead and put that here. And then I'm going to drag my out color to my copper and place it over here. All right. So now that I have that, let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like now. Well, nothing's happening because I haven't assigned the shader to this geometry, the third shader ball. So let's go ahead and grab these three pieces, right click, assign existing material, and I'm going to look for my AI mix shader. All right, so this is a mix of these two. You can see the little bit of the gold. You can see the red. This is a 50-50 mix. So I want to go ahead and drive this with an ambient occlusion. So let's go ahead and do a tab, ambient occlusion AI, which is for Arnold. I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. And what I want to do is try to grab that out color and drag it into the mix. But you'll notice that it's gray. And if, if you've seen my tutorials before, you'll know why. And the reason why is because Mix can only accept black and white images. Let's go ahead and open up the out color, grab the R, and drag it into the mix, and now it accepts it. I'm going to start moving things around. And by the way, you can collapse this. If you click on the number 1, it turns it really small. 2 it just shows you the basics, and 3 will uh, show you the rest, and of course 4 will show you everything. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to go ahead and collapse one, 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 one. There we go. I can select all of them and do one, but I just decided to go ahead and uh, do that. Okay. So this is here. And let's take a look at what we have now. So now this is being dri driven by occlusion. 
Now this can be a little bit hard to see. So I want to see how occlusion is actually affecting this. But if you notice, there's more gold at the top and less gold in the center over here. So let's find out why. Let's grab this little guy right here, which is the isolate select. And we're going to select on ambient occlusion. And this is what ambient occlusion looks like. Ambient occlusion just means that it it emits beams all over the object and it uh, it kind of bounces. And if there is areas where it doesn't it can't bounce as much, it makes it darker. And if there's a lot of bounce, it'll make it lighter. So that's how you get ambient occlusion, which gives you this really nice results. So we can use this to drive our rust. Ways to control this would be to kind of play around with the spread. So that means that I can make the spread a little bit smaller and therefore you're going to get a much more dramatic feel. But I also start getting a little bit of noise, which I can increase my samples so I can get it clear. I can also kind of play around with my far clip and near clip and see if any of these things drive it. But at the end, what I really want to use is AI range, and that's going to give me complete control over my, my black and white image here. So let's go ahead and use an AI range. So tab AI range, here it is, drag it in one day. I look forward to today when I can drag this between connections, so we'll do it automatically. But in the meanwhile, grab the out color from your AI inclusion, put it in inputs and open up the little plus sign, grab the R and drag it into the mix. Okay, so this is what it looks like with ambient occlusion. This is what it looks like with just a range. And let's go ahead and play with the range. Now, it really depends what you want to do. Do you want to make this darker? So that means that this area is going to be really uh, dramatic. So let's see what it looks like right now. So if I select my AI mix, you're going to see that it's a lot of, of rust at the bottom and the gold is much more noticeable up here. This is a little bit over the top, so I'm going to go back to my range and actually maybe go the other way. Now, by the way, if uh, you're getting the inverse color, like for example, it looks something like this instead. Um, where the gold is actually at the bottom, um, you just need to inverse the colors. Okay. You can either just switch the, uh, the shaders, you know, just kind of drag them and reconnect them or just invert the colors here, like what I just did. So I'm going to go back. All right. So what I really want is to have a little bit of dark at the bottom and a lot more white at the top. So I have a much more dramatic gradient. So now that I have that, you can see that I'm getting this really nice copper color at the bottom and then it starts to uh, fade away into the rust. So I can push this even further because this might still be a little bit too much. I might go ahead and just kind of maybe I just want a little bit on the edges. So you just kind of play with it and you just kind of get an idea of what this is going to produce. It's going to create a rusty looking object with a shiny material. So to see a little bit more of that, I'm going to go ahead and select this middle part. And I'm going to go in here and I click here, assign existing material. I want to use the mix shader. I'm going to go back to my renderer. And now you can see that even between the cracks, you're going to get that effect. So that actually is more of the, what I want from the effect. Whoops, grabbed the wrong one, AI range. So you can see how dark it is. And I might need to refresh my, update my scene. Oh, it's going to crash. Uh-oh, I think it's crashing. Yep, okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. All right, so I have everything back. That was kind of strange. Don't forget to save. Uh, Arnold has a little bit of, um, it still has a little bit of glitches and kinks and stuff like that, so it has a tendency to crash. So make sure you save as a lot. So uh, just make sure you're always saving. Okay. So what we had before was I had this um, object and it's uh, it's being driven with occlusion. I love occlusion. It's actually very powerful. I use it all the time. So uh, make sure you put that in your arsenal of shadings. Then we attach it to a range. will give us a nice little occlusion right here. Make it very dramatic. And then after that, you just have your shaders, which drive the texture. So what's really nice about occlusion is that uh, it will put the rust like water will get stuck in here and therefore it will make that area rusty. Same thing with maybe moss. I think I could push this a little bit more. I'm going to go back in here into my mix shader and maybe I might need to type things in. So maybe I'll go to uh, 0.25 
and see if that's a much more interesting look. It's a little noisy, but I might want that. Oops, that's not my shader. And let's see what that looks like. So I'm definitely a lot happier with that. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And so now you can see it all the way across how it's looking. Now that you've set this up, there's a couple of things you can do with this. A, you can change this into green, maybe a little bit of a forest green-ish look. And this is gonna make it look like moss is growing. And you can do all sorts of things. So actually what I have is um, a texture. So I'm gonna go into my file and it's always gonna look better if you have a file attached to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the render because it's taking up a lot of my CPU. I'm gonna go ahead and attach a texture to it. So for example, I already have um, a handy folder. I call it textures.com because that's where I got my textures from. It's called, it's a great site called textures.com. I highly recommend that you check it out. And I actually have Rust, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in there. This is what my Rust looks like. I can take a look at it here as well. So let me go ahead and uh, bring back Arnold. And this is what my Rust looks like. This is an actual textured map. And you can see that just by adding a real texture of Rust, I get a much more realistic look on my uh, texture. So definitely push that. That's something that I'm trying to encourage is that you want to set up your shaders like this and then eventually start adding your own maps. And of course, it's going to look better once you have a bump map, a specular map, and you play around with the settings. I hope that, that was helpful. That was a really fast uh, tutorial on the mix shader and also the ambient occlusion shader. Pull that back up here. I'm going to isolate again and I'm going to grab, oh, there's the rest. I'm going to grab the ambient occlusion. So this is how you can use the ambient occlusion to drive textures. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. That was a quick tutorial on ambient occlusion. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to share this. I would love for you guys to share this with your friends. You can share it in social media, whatever you like. Again, you can download these uh, this file at academicphoenixplus.com. You can follow along. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate all of your support. Hopefully this will make your shading stronger, better than ever, and awesome. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.